Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 20th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Did you ever have to fail over to a secondary data center, maybe after a power outage or some kind of connectivity interruption to your primary data center. Well, if you have ever been in that situation, you may appreciate uh, Rob's uh, post from Friday where he goes over some of the options you have to automatically script some of the DNS failover that often has to happen in this case. I've used uh, DNS uh, to fail over between data centers uh, many times in the past. I always liked it because it's relatively cheap and easy to do. And these days, most of the cloud providers that you're likely using to host DNS do offer APIs to make this change relatively easy. So Rob has some sample code for you. I've also noticed that there are a number of like Python modules uh, out there that uh, make this uh, kind of scripting easier for uh, different uh, DNS providers and even some that sort of have a generic uh, basically API that then can be used with various uh, cloud-based DNS providers. And did he provide this weekend a quick update to an older diary of his that dealt with the version numbers that you're finding in Visual Basic for application Office documents? Well, there is a new version number for Microsoft Office version 2021. It's Bravo 5. Well, and then we have more news from Log4j and the log 4 shell vulnerability. The vulnerability just keeps on giving. So I figured I'll go over some of the Log4j version numbers that you may be encountering. First, there was Log4j 2.15. It's meant for Java 8 and it fixes the original, if you want to call it this way, log for shell vulnerability with a CVSS score of 10 and a CVE number of 20, 21, 44, 22, 8. This is still the vulnerability that you probably should worry about the most. It's the easiest to exploit and the one that we see really sort of a lot of exploits for in the wild. But it turned out that the patch delivered uh, with 2.15 was not sufficient. Then shortly after, and this uh, was already covered uh, last week, we had a log4j 2.16 for Java 8 that fixes a new vulnerability, CVE 2021-45046. This was originally believed to be a denial of service vulnerability with a CVSS score in the four range, but later was upgraded to a remote code execution vulnerability with a CVSS score in the 9.0. Now, in parallel to Log4j 2.16, we also have 2.12.2 for Java 7. So different Log4j versions, depending on what Java version you're dealing with. But well, we are not done yet. Uh, now on Friday, I believe it was, we also had Log4j 2.17 for Java 8 that uh, fixed yet another vulnerability. Again, believed to be a denial of service vulnerability with a CVSS score of 7.5 and that's CVE 2021-4510.5. So at this point, if you're running Java 8, the latest and greatest version of Log4j is 2.17. If you're running Java 7, the latest version is 2.12.2. The real question is, well, how important is it to update from 2.15 to 2.17? If uh, you already fixed a bunch of systems, should you rather uh, focus on the ones that are not up to 2.15 yet? Well, uh, my advice would be yes, uh, you know, 2.15 fixes the majority of the problem. In order to exploit any vulnerability that was left behind in 2.15, you actually need to use a non-standard logging configuration. I have no idea how common this is. Uh, 
or how easy it is to figure it out for your particular application. So uh, if in doubt, you know, if you haven't updated yet, definitely go straight to 2.17. If you still have a lot of systems uh, to patch, well, uh, leave the ones that are at 2.15 alone for now, and uh, but continue to move forward with 2.17 and then later come back and uh, patch the remaining 2.15 or 2.16 systems. To make this entire thing even more interesting, uh, there was also an interesting blog post that actually not really surprising, but uh, a lot of the patching effort focuses on network reachable applications, basically servers. But clients, of course, are vulnerable as well. And uh, there's an interesting blog post, and I'll link to it in the show notes, that uh, outlines how this vulnerability could be exploited by a user visiting a malicious web page. That malicious web page does then use web sockets in order to trick the log4j vulnerability on the client. And then of course, the same uh, remote code execution dance can start as on server applications that are using log4j. And I'll say it again, keep good notes. I doubt this is really over yet. Uh, so uh, this will uh, stick around for a while. And sometimes after sort of initial flurry of activity vulnerabilities like this, lay a little bit low and uh, then a few months later or so, you may see another log for j vulnerability. So keep good notes. Well, and that's it uh, for today. Sorry for spending so much time on Log4j again, but uh, well, I guess uh, that's the times we're at. Don't miss all the other things happening in your logs, whether or not they're collected with Log4j or not. Uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.